guys <clears throat> hi guys and welcome back to the channel i'm not wearing a hat today it's hat free day so i hope you can uh, stand the white mane but it is what it is when it's not what it should was supposed to be i'm sitting here in my yard under a tree because as always when you're uh, setting up to film something outside the kids come home with a lot of friends and they jump around and play around and they make a lot of noise for the video and I really don't like that so here I am sitting under a tree the, the this was the only place I could hide from them and I hope you're not hearing them in the background today I have a special treat for you I have a Grand Seiko Spring Dive sorry man I have a Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT on my wrist sent to me from watchforsale.com they lent me this bad boy so I could shoot this video and I've really looked forward to uh, getting my hands on a Grand Seiko and uh, really uh, experiencing what the fuss is all about because you know as watch fans and watch nerds uh, I watch a lot of YouTube videos a lot of them I watch TGV Federico talks watches Theo and Harris Teddy Baldessare uh, you name it I watch it cheap watches expensive watches watches uh, channels that are only based on giving you the best bang for the buck ju like uh, just one more watch with the jewelry and uh, I really like watching YouTube content about watches and in uh, almost every video when they post something about Grand Seiko they talk about how great the watches are how perfect the finishing is and how they actually are superior to both Rolex Breitling every other brand in attention to detail and what they offer with the calibers and the movements inside they are accurate uh, to I mean there's no comparing uh, with the accuracy that they provide uh, and uh, I was really looking forward to getting my hands on one of these and then I got in touch with my friend at watchoutforsale.com they had one in shop I asked him if he could send it to me for a video and he did so here it is this video is not sponsored in any way except for him sending this watch to me and me mentioning it mentioning his shop I'm gonna send it right back I wish it could stay here I wish he would give it to me for this video but let's face it I'm not I'm not near that big in the YouTube world so uh, that's not gonna happen so let's take a look at the Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT and uh, let's turn the camera around okay here we are the moment is upon us the opening of the first Grand Seiko I've ever experienced so let's take a look and this is really a big big box and it feels really heavy so let's uh, let's not waste any more time and let's open up the box and as usual let's take check out the stuff that's maybe not as important as the watch we have the spring drive operating instructions this is a hefty book it's like a G-Shock book, one of the more expensive models. This is some really heavy-duty reading, but actually the English part is only this much. But still, it's quite much. And here we have everything we have to know about the spring drive uh, mechanism and uh, difference between differences between the spring drive and the mechanical watches, how it works, what it is history of the spring drive a really nice reading i could spend uh, some time reading this and i have spent some time reading this how to dive with the watch what to do with the watch what not to do with the watch how to set the watch etc let's put it back in there and let's take out the well, let's do it like this let's take out the box in the box and here we have another piece of paper Grand Seiko 
certificate of guarantee yep here we have it the warranty and I think it's uh, stamped here let's not show the serial number and stuff yeah it's stamped and signed with the seller the AD that sold it where it was sold and when it was sold there we have it the box in the box let's put this away and the box in the box the box inside the box you ready for this okay let's check it out and here it is the grand seiko spring drive gmt 2018 edition reference number sbge205 Let's take it out. It, it's resting on a beautiful blue pillow. What do we have in here? Grand Seiko. Seiko. Looking good. I really like this blue color. It's a royal, royal blue. It's a cool box. A cool unboxing experience. Feels luxurious. And um, I know uh, a lot of people don't care at all about the boxes. But I think they're actually pretty cool. And I keep them. And no matter actually... It doesn't matter if I only buy a, a cheap G-Shock. I always keep my boxes. I think it's better for the resale value. Ah. And here it is. The Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT. And it is a beautiful <laughs> and really cool piece of art you can see the it's kind of a vanilla colored uh, backdrop here you see the Grand Seiko logo spring drive GMT and you see the power reserve right there between the seven and eight o'clock Beautifully polished sides, brushed on the top. We have a really easy way to remove the bracelet, spring bars, lugs right in there. Bracelet looking good. We have brushed parts and then we have polished details in the middle. And in the middle of the middle, it's brushed again. Screwed links. As you would expect at this price point let's take a look at the back here we have it the open case back there we have the beautiful Grand Seiko rotor and there we have the movement inside this beautiful beautiful watch it is a caliber 9R66A spring drive movement look at it go you know I um, actually I like open case backs but I don't think they're necessary unless you have a beautiful movement inside there like uh, a couple of days ago I reviewed the Pagani design and it has a Seiko NH35 movement inside. Not a beautiful movement in any way. So I actually think you didn't have to have an open case back on a watch like that. But on a watch like this, they're really proud of the movement as they should. Because it's one of the most accurate movements in the world. And this is something I really appreciate and would love to watch several times over over again if this watch was mine i would probably take it off a couple of times a day just to check it out and see how it beats along nicely you see the jewels inside it's actually a 30 jewel movement this is really beautiful here we have the crown with the grand seiko gs logo 
So let's talk about some specifics. Uh, we have a diameter of 41 millimeters. We have a thickness of 13.5 millimeters. We have a lug width of 20 millimeters and it tapers down to 18 at the clasp. Three fold clasp with release pushers on the sides. Beautiful GS logo on the clasp. It looks really nice on the arm. Stainless steel watch all over, of course. Sapphire glass, date at three o'clock without a cyclops. And this watch is uh, actually from 2018. So it's still under Seiko warranty until 2021 October. Let's put it on on the wrist. It really doesn't match with my tattoos, but we'll leave that to other people to judge. And there it is. This is a smooth and elegant watch. It's a little too big on me because it's not my watch, but um, I'm actually, it's, it feels really comfortable on the wrist. It feels like it's somehow a perfect watch. They've thought of all the details. It really, look at the hour markers. Uh, look at the GMT hand. Such a beautifully dark, dark royal blue uh, GMT hand. The second ticks away. It's a cool watch and I'm not, I'm not really the dressy kind of guy. This is more of a dressy watch, but I would uh, love to wear this uh, every day. Not at work, maybe, guess, because I've told you that I work uh, at a preschool. And this watch wouldn't last long in that preschool. But still, it's it feels really great on the wrist. And I actually think that it looks really, really great. I've tried um, watches with the white dials before. I usually always grow tired of them in, in the long run. But I always, when I get a new watch with a white dial, I fall in love. Uh, and then I fall out of love. But it really looks beautiful. The only thing, the one thing that I would change on this watch that I really don't think is necessary, but a lot of Grand Seikos have it on there, is the power reserve marker. I really think it messes up with the proportions of the mm -hmm. dial. And um, it's, I don't know, uh, I don't really see the use of it. Sure, it's cool to know how much power you have left, but I think it aesthetically does something with the dial that I really don't like. So if I could, I would remove it. I think it would look cleaner without it, but um, it wouldn't be something that would stop me from buying the watch if I was interested in buying it. I really like that the bezel is uh, polished. It makes the dial pop even more. Polished bezel and then matched with the brush uh, details on the lugs and bracelet make it stand out really nicely. Okay, let's talk a little about the thing that makes this watch special, the spring drive. And this part is, uh, I'm borrowing this part from watchoutforsale.com and their description of the watch. Spring drive is a unique watch technology. It generates energy like every other luxury mechanical watch, but combines this with an electronic regulator to deliver a level of precision that no mechanical watch can match. The development of spring drive was possible because Grand Seiko is one of the very few manufacturers with mastery of both electronic and mechanical watchmaking. Spring drive is powered by a mainspring, just like all other mechanical watches. This traditional way of generating power allows the watch to be entirely autonomous, with no need for a battery or other power source. 
Winding the mainspring by turning the crown or by moving the wrist stores energy which is then transferred to gears and used to move the watch hands as the spring unwinds over time. By taking advantage of the high level of torque afforded by the mainspring, the caliber needs no other power to move the long wide hands in the smooth glide motion that is spring drive's signature. Except for the superior accuracy, there are other areas in which the spring drive is actually better than a standard mechanical watch. One, they're not as affected by temperature change. Accuracy of the spring drive is never largely influenced by temperature changes like a mechanical watch, since the crystal oscillator controls it. Two, they're not affected by differences in position. For mechanical watches, the accuracy in is influenced by differences in position or direction of a watch. This is also caused by the balance that controls the accuracy of mechanical watches. As the spring drive adopts a crystal oscillator and not a balance, the accuracy is not influenced by a difference in position. And three, they're not as affected by impact. Mechanical watches are susceptible to impacts. If a mechanical watch was subject to impact, amplitude of vibration of the balance is changed, and even the form of the balance spring is changed. In this regard, the spring drive is superior to mechanical watches in impact resistance because it adopts a crystal oscillator and not a balance. I've got a love-hate relationship with Seiko. You know, a lot of us, we start out our collections with Seikos. And I've owned a lot, I've owned a lot of Seikos. I've owned the SKX 007, the Flight Master, the Turtle, the Samurai, the Monster, the Sumo. I've owned a lot of Seikos. And you know, when you start out with something uh, and you buy a lot of cheaper watches in the beginning, uh, let's be honest, my first real watch was a Breitling and uh, my wife bought it to me as a wedding uh, gift. But uh, my first collecting experience with watches w was with Seiko. I started buying Seikos when I started collecting watches seriously and I was never satisfied. You know, I liked the watches but I always sold it and I bought a new one and then I sold that one and I bought a new one. I sold it, I bought a new one and the spiral goes on and on. I think we uh, watch nerds, uh, we um, are alike in that way that we buy a lot of watches and uh, in the beginning we buy a lot of cheap watches maybe and uh, we climb the ladder and we buy more expensive watches and then someday we end up with a grail watch and uh, Seiko in that way they left a bitter taste in my mouth you know uh, with every Seiko that I bought I liked it but I never felt really satisfied so I sold it and that's my history with Seiko. I, I liked the watches, but I was never satisfied, always sold them. And that's why I have this love-hate relationship because I like the brand. They have a lot of history. Uh, it's a cool brand, but it's not for me. And I'm really over Seiko right now. But then Grand Seiko, when you start digging in the hobby and start looking around and uh, start teaching yourself stuff by reading, you get, uh, you come across Grand Seiko. And Grand Seiko is a total different story. Grand Seiko always intrigued me because they're Seiko, but they're not Seiko. Uh, they're their own thing. And they really uh, make watches that can compete with the best in the business. They have a cool history and they have the magnificent movements and calibers inside that are insanely accurate. And uh, I was intrigued by that because, as I said, a love-hate relationship to Seiko, but maybe a Grand Seiko is something else, and maybe it would be only love. So I'm really happy to show this watch to you guys, and I'm really happy that uh, Watch Out For Sale uh, sent this watch to me so I could experience it. Actually, this watch made me uh, think about uh, Grand Seiko versus Rolex comparison because in a lot of videos that I watch and a lot of comments that I read to those videos 
I see a lot of comments that Grand Seiko is better than Rolex and they're comparing it to Rolex. You get a lot more for your money compared to Rolex. Rolex is just hype. Rolex is just the name. You're paying for the name. And I thought about that and I really have a good idea for a video. I'm not going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with my uh, GMT Master 2 because it's not in any way the same type of watch. Sure, it's a GMT, but it's they're really nothing alike. This is a dressier GMT. The GMT Master 2 is not dressy at all. It's colorful, not classy. So I'm, I'm not gonna do that kind of comparison, but I'm gonna talk a little about which brand I prefer and why. I'm gonna talk a little bit about fanboys and I'm gonna talk about value and my perception of value. So, but that video is for another time. I'm really thankful for all the positive comments I get and for all the subscribers that get added to my channel. It helps the channel grow. And my only goal with the channel is to make it grow so that you guys and me myself, let's not pretend it's not a, I don't have some kind of egoist, egoistical uh, motive behind it. I get to experience cool watches when the watch channel grows and I take those experiences and share them with you in videos, which I hope you like. So there we have it. Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT 2018. Reference number SBGE205. Beautiful, beautiful watch. And as usual, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe. If you didn't like it, please give me a thumbs down. It'll make me, uh, eh, I don't know, it'll make me know that you didn't like it. And maybe if you leave a comment, I can do something better the next time that I didn't do right this time. And uh, this watch, as I told you in the beginning, was sponsored by watchoutforsale.com. You can actually buy this Grand Seiko on their website. Uh, they're really trustworthy. I know the guy who runs the company personally. He's a friend of mine and he's, he's a great guy to buy watches from. They even have a uh, watch out for sale a magazine. You can uh, become a member on their website and you get the magazine a couple of times a year. You get discounts when selling watches through them and you get discounts when buying watches from them. So I, I really recommend check out their website. Uh, maybe sign up for a membership. It pays off in the end, especially if you like vintage watches. And if you consider buying this watch, they're actually is a few is there's no guy better than the guy who runs the website to buy stuff from so uh, there we have it i hope i'll see you again in the next video and for now bye bye